Good luck. Welcome back. I believe we're in week 205 of the weekly teaching ladder. We get to play against a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent and review the game together. And um, yeah, it's an exciting experience I recommend for everyone. Um, I know it does take time, but um, I think it's time better spent learning the game together than apart. Interesting. Let me start building a castle over here. The idea behind lifting the silver is to hit this. Thank you. Um, so a silver can aggressively target this point. It could also prevent me from pushing this pawn too quickly. <laughs> this could also signal uh, a strong desire to play opposing rook. Um, but in the past, I've tempered this desire with my playing uh, a swinging rook opening quickly. Now here, I've accidentally hung the pawn. Uh, I didn't mean to give that up, actually. I was so fixated on stopping this advance that I forgot to protect this point. Um, and maybe I'm just excited to be playing on our weekly ladder again. There, that's the excuse. Uh, okay, this is Twin Gold Castle. It's a good castle. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to oppose this bishop. We've actually switched. Since we both played swinging rook, this is... That's uh, curious. It's a wild position. Um... Okay, I'll play one of my more interesting attacking ideas, where I switch the bishop over here um, to prevent the rook from pushing this pawn. Uh -huh. Do I have time for my idea? Surely I must have sometime. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm playing this attack reasonably or unreasonably. It looks interesting. So my idea now, um, or in many cases, has been that it's difficult to support this silver. Um, But I've not done myself any favors on the other hand. Um, <laughs> oh no. Okay, well, we're going to get another special. I'm just so excited to be playing some of these moves. But, um, yeah, uh, this notion of using the pieces is somewhat overriding the notion of how much the pieces are generally valued at. Oh, right. I forgot that exists. <sighs> that would have been good to remember. Yeah, so I'm not a fan of giving up my rook for... Oh wait, I could still take this and then take the lance. This is possible. 
Um, yeah, it's aggressive as heck. But it looks interesting. And I don't see a strong counter to it. So... Hmm. I'm somewhat conflicted, because I could advance the silver, drop the pawn, and attack differently here. I don't need to sacrifice the bishop. But if I do that different attack, it's harder to break this open. But arguably, the way I'm considering attacking doesn't really break it open either. This is why you don't go all out on an attack. Because many attacking ideas are premature. Mine included. I messed up. Um, well, looks like I messed up. No, surely I did. <sighs> okay. I don't like admitting that this position's not great, but it's not a great position. Mm hmm Why? We'll approach this as a slower game. I don't need to play um, the most aggressive move every move. If I'd spent one tempo lifting the rook earlier, I could play the knight up behind it. Um, which could be a shape. But as it stands now, they can just open their bishop, and I might have to drop the pawn here. Which is why I was going to sack to take the silver and not end up in this. But, yeah, if I bring the knight up, they just push the pawn. Well, then I could drop a pawn. Okay, so the tactics are okay there. Pawn up. Pawn drop, pawn up, pawn takes. I lose some material, but I get some material. It's fine. Um, yeah, dropping the pawn in front of my rook is a disaster. I can't do that. Okay, we're going to play this aggressive move then. Also, if they push this, I could consider just letting the lance go and use my knight. But I don't need to play that way. Because um, I don't need to give up the lance. I have a pawn. I could just use the pawn instead. But yeah, here our opponent is playing opposing rook. Um, one of the key characteristics of opposing rook that... Um, is that generally the attacker is supposed to like push this pawn very speedily down the board to make big threats. Currently, this is just a big target. Um, so, this isn't exactly what they hoped for. Um, they could push this, so I don't have this knight jump. Also, I'm considering just pushing the lance once. Um, and I could also push the spawn if they push that, and it's uh, it's somewhat tricky. Uh, also, I could, oh, well, I have to take this, but also, it looks like a free pawn. I have to take it, though, because letting them take and hit my bishop's head is no good. Um, I 
Interesting. Pawn takes, pawn drop, push. It's too much. Um... Wait, why am I giving this away for free? If I push Rook over... Alright, do I have any tricks? I mean, I could bring the bishop up, they push this, and then I do that. Um, that's a disaster, because they get to drop here... and escape, probably? Maybe not. No, this is loose. They do get to escape. Um, hmm. Pawn drop takes pawn drop. Uh, seems like the fastest way to go here. But then they can push on the knight's head. But then I take here, they take my knight. I take a gold, they take back. Yeah, it's not good enough. I could retreat the rook. It's sad. Um, hmm. All right, I block my rook temporarily in order to perhaps guard my knight's head um, in, in all these crazy lines where we end up taking, uh, where we take a silver, they can take my knight, I can take back. Um, oh, well this walks into a fork. Um, it's really hard to say no to this fork. But I have better. Man. Do I have better? It's a really good fork. It's not good enough, though. Unblocking my rook is awesome. Um, <sighs> giving them a knight is not so awesome. Okay, well... No, if Rook takes, if it's Silver takes, King takes. It's not a good enough fork. Oh, I could support this for one tempo. They push this pawn. Oh, then I can't take here. Oh, man. What a confusing position. The common thread in everything here is that I need to defend my king. So I'll defend my king. And this defends a lot of spaces, although it does open a hole here. But there's not a way to exploit that hole. The generals defend each other. My pawns are defended. Um, yeah, this is a hot mess, but it's my hot mess. 
if rook takes, I can exchange bishops. Rook takes, and then I have a bishop drop. They could drop the bishop. We exchange. Okay, well, I'm assuming they calculated this. I didn't have time to explain it all here, but... Um, yeah, no, this... In fact, I have a bishop drop here, and then I take the lance with gain of tempo. So, the time to calculate that was last turn. This is where we cue the epic reversal, if there is one. Um... Like, if you're going to blitz out the previous move, and it leads to some deep combination, um, it looks really cool if you end up on top at the end of that combination. It looks not as cool if things don't end up your way. So the problem here is twofold. One, that the king isn't exactly in the castle, which is, a in this case, actually the smaller problem. The bigger problem is that this bishop is loose and that it's the only piece supporting the rook, and the rook is also it's defended, but um, maybe they just have to... Well, the fact that the king's exposed means I, if I were to take here, then I'm threatening a fork. So maybe this... These problems are related. Okay. Well, I have no problems anymore, as best as I can tell. Um, yeah, normally we don't want to entice the gold diagonally forward, at least for our own gold general. But it does cover an immense amount of territory. I do have a rook now, in addition to having a bishop, so that's pretty cool. If I had a gold, we would be threatening rook drop and gold drop at some point. I have no gold. This could be a long game. But, um, yeah, that's a cool sack. Um, I may be underestimating threats, as I tend to do sometimes. Like, I guess they could drop something down here and then drop something else down here and have multiple forks going on. Um, so it would depend what those somethings are uh, as to like how I could best respond to the such moves. Like, I guess bishop drop, rook down, silver drop here, rook runs away. Bishop's trapped, and if Silver takes this, I get the... Well, no, I don't get the Bishop. Bishop, Rook, Silver, I take here, they take my gold. Yeah, they still have some threats, but um, Silver first gets the Silver trapped. Um, They might have a Pawn drop, but I think I've got that covered. They might have a pawn sack here and then a pawn drop somewhere, but again, I think I'm fine. If this pawn were up one more square, they might be able to push and then threaten a bishop drop, forking both sides of the board. However, the bishop does not promote on this rank, so uh, I think I'm doing fine. Plus, if the bishop were here, I'd have a rook fork anyway. Yeah, that's rough. So I guess I'm threatening both the rook drop, which looks terrifying in its own right. Um, but if they find some way to deal with this, um, I'm also threatening to drop a bishop and then like resume bringing the knight out, hitting this, or pawn drop, pawn drop. And still exploiting this pin to the lance. Um... 
but I want to proceed with some caution here. Like, I guess they could drop something around here to defend against a rook drop. Bishop there, rook here. Silver there instead. I don't know. Bishop here, maybe. Then they just exchange bishops. No, silver here, I have a fork. <sighs> silver drop here. Um, I probably have a bishop drop to promote the bishop somewhere, but that might not be best. But yeah, I think this shape hopefully holds up against whatever's thrown at it. Hopefully. Um, it'd be a shame if it didn't. Unfortunately, at this point, um, yeah, they're in some time pressure. Not, like, 60 second Bioyomi is not the end of the world. But it's one thing to be in time pressure in an even position. It's another thing to be in time pressure in a difficult position. So try to avoid the latter. Um, you can't always avoid it. But uh, yeah, recovering this might be quite difficult. Maybe they've got some crazy pawn to Suji out here, something. I, it seems too slow, <clears throat> but you never know. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, that king is exposed here. I've done this before. Yeah, that's rough. Sorry. Oh, I suppose I could check if they're typing multiple things. We could take a look at what's being typed. Uh, Yeah, this wasn't what I was primarily focused on. Although, this did threaten to hit my king. So that's how I noticed it. And then I came up with this move against it. So, yeah, I saw this. This is a legit threat. And then there's some legit threats out here, too. Um, but, yeah, this overrides that concern, unfortunately. Thanks for the game. Yeah, so now we get to review the game together. Most people prefer to review uh, through the chat here, so that's fine. I'll zoom in once, because if I zoom in twice, the UI breaks. Um, yeah, so let's take it away. What would you prefer to look at? Um... In general, it is excellent if um, the player who did not win starts the discussion somewhere. Although we could start any way we prefer to. Hmm. Oops. So yeah, they stopped my opening attack idea. Um, um, yeah. 
This was a great castle, and yeah, there are many things in their favor here. Um, yes, there's many good things that they did. It's easy to feel disheartened after a painful loss. Uh, and so that's why like, I dropped the rook immediately. We're trying to end that pain as quickly as we can. Uh, yeah, so they've also got this, uh, um, yeah. I was, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Although, um, so. Yeah. Yeah, so in this variation we do exchange material. Um oh, I guess I do this here. Yeah. Yeah, they made the suggestion that uh, the king might need to protect this. Um, no, that's exactly spot on. But yeah, in this case... Um, oh, I... yeah. realize you don't have a pawn in hand here uh, so actually I might be able to take the pawn directly uh, that's kind of a problem because uh, yeah Uh, okay, so maybe this is, hmm. Hmm, I thought this would be fine. But maybe it's not? What the heck is going on then? I just played good moves and didn't realize why they were so good. Is that what happened? Um, hmm, jeez, this is, I feel that's somewhat of a loss here, trying to recommend something to try. Um, because, yeah, these attacking moves look so nice. <sighs> yeah, maybe there's like this? I don't know. This looks so tough. Well, I think you might need to do this, but, um, yeah, and the idea is that, um, this hurts. This is so painful. Um, but, yeah, this...
I don't think I can break through. Um, yeah, this... Maybe I'm missing something. This looks hard. Um, yeah, I guess in this case I might have overpressed. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Um, I just don't have enough. Um, Since I don't have a silver participating in this attack, it just isn't enough. This castle just barely holds on by the smallest possible measure. But it is enough to hold on. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. They've seen this with the King on 6-2 while trying to build the fortress. Yeah. Hmm. Now there is another attacking idea which doesn't involve first moving the knight, but instead first dropping a pawn and second dropping a pawn like I was originally trying to explain. But I think that likewise, that attacking idea is too slow here. I have to prepare it first. Um, yeah, I was glad to push this and exchange it off. Um, uh, so yeah, it's not as if I'm calculating everything super deep. But um, I'm getting some key aspects of the game played well. That's making up for my shortcomings in calculation, where I have shortcomings. Or I guess we call it reading in this game. In chess, we call it calculating. They were thinking they need to make a counterattack. Hmm... Mm. Mm. Yeah, and defending early lets me know where to attack, but you always need a good castle, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, your rook and bishop being blocked really eased my calculation here. Um, that's how I was able to move with as much confidence as I did move with. Um, so, yeah, I would have played much more cautiously if, um, the Rook and Bishop were making, uh, lots and lots of threats, as opposed to just the number of threats that were made in the game. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, so... When I'm playing something like this, it means I'm really not afraid of what they're threatening. Whether I should be or not. Uh, uh, yeah. The You want to use both the Rook and the Bishop effectively. Um, um, so... Um, Like, I'm guarding the square. Um, yeah. Uh, oh! <laughs> Interesting. I've not... S well, okay. Yeah, I guess that could target my rook at some point. Yeah, I play strange moves. Um, that's kind of what I do. Um, I'm trying to improve it playing normally. Hmm. Um... If I just left the bishop on the other diagonal, then it would, making threats would have been harder. Um, yeah, at this point, yeah, I mean, that's fair. Problem is, I can win this pawn, and they can't really easily block this attack. Yeah, this is, yeah, this looks like a big threat. Um, yeah, and the worst bit about it, wait, do I, is it not as bad as it looks? Hmm, it looked really bad. Maybe it just looks bad? That's confusing for sure. Um, can I drop back here? So I'm threatening a pawn drop and then to try to exchange some pieces with this rook still out here. Um, yeah. So, this looks pretty rough. So, I'll just play this. And maybe sacrifice the. Well, yeah, definitely sacrifice the bishop. Um. Uh, we need to enter this castle. But maybe it just looks bad. Maybe this is fine. Somehow. Yeah. There's... It's something to consider for sure. Um... There might be something better for all I know. Also, I probably would drop the rook back first and then exchange knights and drop the pawn, but it doesn't affect the final position there. 
Oh, actually, I could just take... Can't I? Um... Hmm. Can I just take this? Oh, it's not my turn. Yeah. It's funny though, like spectators who drop by and take a look at our analysis are gonna, yeah. Also, yeah, none of, like all these lines that involve moving the knight, I could start in many cases. Well, it, when I get the pawn, I could start them with the pawn drop, pawn drop instead. Um, but yeah, some spectators will see far more than we do. That's just the nature of spectating. Um, yeah, what cued me in to do this pawn push, I wonder? Um, Uh, I guess this is, um, well, that and playing Opposing Rook. They played this, which is actually They just played like third file or central file or fourth file or something. I might have played Mino Castle. We might have had a normal game. Um, but this is such a strong attacking idea that uh, I played a weird response. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, it did work in the game. Um, but that might not suggest that they did anything wrong. Uh, I, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, so, um, I don't know, maybe this. Like, there might be some pretty heavy shots to fire here. Uh... Yeah, so I don't know exactly what's going on here. It's possible that maybe I, uh, C 
so yeah. Us trying to get them to stop and think a bit, because this gets complicated. Um but that didn't happen here. Um and that's okay. <laughs> this is an exciting game no matter how you play it. Um Yeah. Yeah. Um but maybe I have this. <laughs> uh, this looks pretty wild, man. Uh, I, yeah, I'm out of my element here. I'm not even sure that I care. Um, it looks pretty cool. So, I'm not saying I calculated all that. Maybe that's playable. Um, but if you're playing Opposing Rook, you're asking for a fight. <laughs> you gotta fight, buddy. <laughs> that's fine. Um, yeah. It was such a wild game. Time pressure is rough for everyone. Okay, yeah, that's a cool idea, too. Um, I wonder here, though... Might I have this directly? And then I have this. Like, this is the general trap that uh, affects a lot of these positions. Yeah. Yeah. So, opening study is kind of my weakness. And I'm having to make up for that by finding extremely colorful tactics. Uh, that looks nice. What the heck do I play against this? Um, yeah. Yeah, activating my rook still makes sense. I actually agree with that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take this. They'll drop the pawn at some point. And then I want to control this point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think this is okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, push the edge pawn. We're going to push this at some point so this doesn't hang. Um, yeah, that looks fine. I don't see anything fundamentally wrong with this. Yeah, funny enough, I could build the same castle here. Um, <laughs> um, oh. That's interesting. Why would somebody play this? It looks fine, but I just haven't seen it before. Um, so I'm curious what this is. 
yeah, in a teaching letter, it's possible for anyone to learn. Um, so, yeah, the point of post-game discussion is to share direct ideas in both directions. It's a cool idea, though. Hmm. Yeah. That's a really cool idea. Oh, develop into right Yagra. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it's an intermediate form of building a castle, I suppose. Huh. Again, I've not seen it before, but uh, we'll take it. Yeah. Um, if I went for that, they just put their work on the fourth file. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, if I'm crazy about my third file attack, they can do this. Now, granted, they might... Like, with my pawn this far advanced on file four... It's not going to be easy for them to play the fortress, but um, they might not be able to, but they might be able to somehow. And since my rooks, yeah, it's kind of funny how we've transposed into a double fortress kind of position. Um, even though, like, we both played swinging rook, it's possible, I guess, to get symmetry um, although I did mess, well, at some point I messed things up by switching the bishop over, threatening this, and they had no idea how to address it. Which was tricky. Tricky, tricky me. Our second file rook is good against anything but right Yagra. They can just go back to file four. They can make Yagra itself, and it's good against third file. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there are some opponents in this ladder who do tend to play second file rook, so yeah, if I could like play this well um, <laughs> and understand what I'm doing, then that'd be fine. Oh! Yeah, so for double swinging rook, I guess this is the meta. I've been asking what the meta is. I haven't looked around as much as I should, admittedly, but um, that's really cool. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> they only play third file rook um, against central file rook. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what to say in general about that. Um. Oh, they use fourth file rook against static rook. That makes sense, at least if they're playing Gota. Fourth file rook is a more defensive sort of strategy until the opponent uh, leaves a breakthrough and then you just break through. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. Yeah, this is our analysis together. Fun times. Um...
yeah, again, I checked with the opponent before the game and confirmed it was fine for me to make videos, uh, as I've been doing the whole time. I just let them know I do that as a courtesy. So far, nobody's objected, but even if somebody did, like, it's... anyway. Um, yeah, this is a cool attacking idea. Uh, apparently, yeah, I can play silver, gold, gold, even though I wasn't seriously considering that. Apparently it trans uh, transposes into right fortress, um, or right Yagra. And, like, I played this move, so at least I had some clue what was up, and, like, yeah, I just wasn't fully ready to commit to playing that. Um, instead, I switched the bishop over. Which, again, there might be some tactical hazards. I'm not playing traps on purpose. I just don't know what's going on. Um, I was down, like, four minutes on the clock, so... I played some somewhat aggressive moves, caught my opponent off balance, and then this threatens to cover my knight's head, and I have two pawns in hand so I can drop drop and like crazy stuff can happen. I took one tempo here to defend this point and this point, um, and even this point, because I was super concerned about long term attacking prospects. I don't think I built up the strongest attack just yet. Then this landed and all hell broke loose. Um, arguably this might be safer. And this might provoke me. Because uh, I don't know that I have further development of this castle available to me at this time. Like, sure, I was considering trading silvers or something, but that didn't immediately seem to be the way to go. Um, but yeah, I was considering this sort of thing, and this sort of thing, and who knows how this might have played out. <laughs> this could have been fun. I had, like, this is my idea, but it's not fully formed. There's a lot of uh, details in this picture to be filled in. And this just presumes, first of all, that they're going to take this with the bishop. Like, there's probably some really complicated tactic somewhere. Like, I started to suggest, well, what if they do this instead? Well, okay, then we might end up here, and then if I try something like this, this doesn't instantly break through. But we have this instead. But then they take the lance. But they might not take the lance. So, like... There's a lot going on. It's possible that their position is much superior here, even though I prevented them from easily playing their favorite fortress. So I caused just enough confusion with this weakness and this silver protecting this that they had to slow down and just unfortunately that didn't happen and things just exploded here. But fortunately for me, I've got enough things from this game I can review, look at. Maybe I'll bring this to another live stream to look at together. Maybe I'll bring this to Lily Lion Main's channel and we could discuss ideas. There's a whole wealth of things, not just in this position, but all the positions leading up to it, uh, to be discussed. So um, it's not a waste of a game at all. And yeah, it left both of us with some good discussion points about timing of castles and like what's typical meta and such. Um, even though I don't generally favor that kind of discussion, because generally people <laughs> haven't cited their sources. Um, and while this opponent didn't cite their sources either, the source at least seemed credible. Like they spoke with such authority. Um, that I'm actually inclined to believe what they're saying, even not knowing what the source is. It's in even if they're mistaken, and even if they are wrong, like it's better than what I know. Um, they were able to explain key ideas, like um, yeah, building the fortress, 
and that they said this is a key concept in double swinging rook games and that um, attacking with the fourth file rook against fortress is a typical idea to break it down. This is a logical chain of connected ideas that explain, um, I forget that like the chess word that's most similar comes to my mind is tapia, where you have just a general formation or idea or concept of how you want to handle a sort of position. Um, and yeah, again, I was able to prevent them from playing the thing that was most familiar to them. Although I did have my small set of Tabi of just open the rook line, use the rook and bishop together, throw a knight in the mix, and like in this case I was able to get another pawn, and lots and lots of tactics were possible. And I just fixated on, like, I'm just going to do this. Well, I didn't completely fixate on that. I supported this. This prevented them from easily building that shape. I was able to bring my silver to rest upon my center pawn and protect this point. And then was able to gradually start building in a direction that kind of sort of looked like the fortress. While their rook ended up blocked. So there, there's a lot of things going on. Um, arguably, I should know this game better if uh, this is my rank. I should have a stronger conception of what openings look like, but such is the state of things in our Western world that I'm able to get away with this BS and still maintain this rating by following simpler concepts of just use the rook, use the bishop, build a castle. It doesn't have to have a name. Named castles do tend to work better and try to fluster the opponent's ability to do the same thing, but um, yeah, as I climb higher, I will need to actually study things better and not make as much stuff up. So, yeah, teaching letters is a good experience for everyone. I would recommend it. And um, it is a time investment, but for those who are already spending time on things other than Suma Shogi, you're studying the game and trying to learn and improve at the game beyond just Suma Shogi. Uh, consider doing it with other humans. Consider joining the ladder, exchanging ideas, because the community is large and growing, and you will have difficulty coming up with the ideas on your own. And regardless of an opponent's rating and rank, they can have excellent ideas, so treat everyone with respect. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.